Hello, hello, everybody. <clears throat> so it's Antoine, and we're starting right now our weekly webinar on new activities <clears throat> that we've developed. So I've got a great number of things to show you this week. Oh, I didn't ask, just to check. The sound is okay, right? You can hear yeah. what I say, and you can see my screen. Right? Yes. Perfect. <clears throat> so this week I've got a lot of things to show you. We've, we've developed quite a number of activities in different ranges. Uh, the key ones, just to check understanding and basic logic of our students. We've done a lot of new P2s to automate certain things and a lot of new P3s and production exercises to get students to actively use what they've learned. We've got a number of things to do today. There are gonna be activities for lower levels and activities for higher levels. So I suggest we get cracking with <clears throat> there is, there are. So this is low level materials. There is, there are, as you can see here, you can find it easily by selecting grammar, for instance. You'll also find there is, there are in your target language. There we go. So let me show you <clears throat> everything for there is, there are, because last week I got a lot of requests for that. So what do we have for there is, there are? First of all, we have two speed unscramble activities for low level, A0, A1, and A2. Now, speed unscramble, we've done a lot of these together. So I'm not gonna go over in details of the uh, instructions again. There's a video ex uh, explanation right here. If you click on it, it opens our YouTube channel. And you'll see Tom describing speed unscramble. Let me open it here. Here you have it. For example, students need to unscramble the words and form the sentences. But you're gonna add a speed factor, which is going to force students to make the associations faster and faster and faster. There are three cats. There's a school. There are good restaurants. <clears throat> There's a big house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These speed unscramble are not new materials. You see, that's why they're on page two. And there's a very nice Dream Island project I presented a while back. That's also for There Is, There Are. It's, this is not a new activity. This is a great project for students to design their Dream Island. And they're going to be using a lot of There Is, There Are, of different kinds of uh, vocabulary, sports, places, free time, toys, things like that. Here's our example of a dream island. It's Candy Island. You see there are ice cream, uh, there are ice cream hills. There's, uh, there's a sweet town. There are lollipop fields. There's a milkshake river. I love spending my Sundays uh, at the milkshake river. There's, there's a milkshake waterfall that goes with it and everything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Students uh, design their dream island and then they present it to each other. So that's also project for there is there are but as I said those are not new activities they've been there for a while now what we've added are all these new activities here there is there are we've done that for both uh, a0 a1 level and for a2 level so first things first just to check we're on the same page check basic logic and understanding we've got there is there are true or false activities. It's very simple. There's a picture. There's, there are statements and the students need to say if they're true or false. There are three lamps. True. There are four balls. One, two, false. <clears throat> There's one cat. I see two cats, one black, one white, etc. So this is true or false for A0, A1. Same thing for A2 level. 
Just another picture and more statements. There are six lamps this time. There are three mice on the floor. There's one cat on the sofa, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here you have it. There is, there are, true or false. And another type of P1, again, just to check understanding with our students, we have two FIB. Remember FIB, fill in the blank activities. So one for A0, A1 level, one for A2 level. If you open it here, you have plenty of fill in the blank activities. There you go. In our city, mm -mm -mm, four theaters, two universities, and three shopping centers. In the castle, 20 rooms. Clear? Mm -hmm. Fill in the blanks for A2 level and fill in the blank for A0, A1 level. Same idea. Lots of fill in the blank activities. Two fridges, a big round table, four books, five rooms, one laptop in my bag, etc. Are there any questions on these? These, these are just to start with P1 activities for there is, there are. Okay. It's pretty clear, right? Just true or false and fill in the blanks. Yes. Let's move on to the P2 activities then, to automate. So here to automate, there is, there are, because again, this is like he, she, it plus S. It can be very, it can be really frustrating for the teacher because it's not complicated. There is, there are should be pretty straightforward. The, the, the struggle that students have is not understanding there is, there are, but more automating it so that they don't make the mistake when they're speaking or when they're writing. So we wanna make it automatic. So here are different activities to make that automatic. Firstly, you can use a short answer race. I like using short answer races a lot. You have the activity description on the first page and then there you go, the cards. So you cut them up, uh, you cut these up into little cards and stack them into a pile and students are going to ask each other and answer the question as fast as they can. So as always with P2s, <clears throat> you do the first one slowly so the student is confident, feels yes I can do this. First time slowly, second time they time themselves, third time they challenge themselves and they have three attempts to reach that challenge. So let's say we've already done it slowly once. I'm a student, I feel quite confident, and I take out my timer, and this is the second time. So I'm gonna time myself how fast I can do this. Okay, ready Antoine, ready, steady, go. Is there a TV? Yes, there is. Is there a cat? Yes, there is. Is there a toilet? No, there isn't. Are there windows? Yes, there are. Is there a bath? No, there isn't. Is there a clock? Yes, there is. Is there a guitar? No, there isn't. Are there computers? No, there aren't. Are there chairs? Yes, there are. Are there clothes? Yes, there are. Is there a dog? Yes, there is. Are there shoes? No, there aren't. 18 seconds, 18. Bravo to me, bravo to me. 18 seconds, 18. Now, what would be a good challenge for me now? How much can I improve my score of 18 seconds, 18? What do you think? Just 18. Just 18. Shall we try to aim for 13 seconds? 13, okay. Maybe even 12? Oh, All right, let's go for 12. So in class, I would have three attempts in total to reach my challenge. We're just going to do it once. 12 seconds. Okay. <clears throat> Ready, steady, go. Is there a TV? Yes, there is. Is there a cat? No, there isn't. Is there a toilet? Yes, there is. Are there windows? No, there aren't. Is there a bath? Yes, there is. Is there a 
fuck, no, there isn't. Is there a guitar? Yes, there is. Are there computers? No, there aren't. Are there chairs? No, there aren't. Yeah. Are there clothes? Yes, there are. Is there a dog? Yes, there is. Are there shoes? No, there aren't. 15 seconds, 11. 15. You see, I didn't reach my challenge, but I already improved my time by three seconds. This is something that all students can do. <clears throat> as long as the students are in state of confidence, when they've done it slowly once, like, yes, I can do this. The answers are clear. It's just a matter of speed. Then they can time and challenge themselves to do it faster and faster. And what their brain is doing is very simply making it automatic. They're transferring this from knowledge to a skill. So there you have it. That's short answer race for there is, there are. Are there any questions on short answer race? No, no, all is clear. We've got loads of short answer races for loads of different tenses and everything. So I don't think this is anything new. I've presented short answer races loads and loads of times. Let's have a look at some flashcard reaction games, singular or plural. Mm -hmm. so that's other, another way of automating there is, there are. What we're gonna do here very simply is we're gonna quickly show a picture to students and they have to, as fast as possible, say there is or there are. So you, there you go. Those are the pictures. You cut them up into little cards. And again, students just show the card. Student A shows the card to student B. Student B should react very quickly by saying what there is or what there are. So the first card, there's a pencil. The second card, there are two books. The first card, there's a window. The th there are four computers. There's a guitar. There's a cat. There's a book. There are three pencils. On and on and on like this. All the students have to do is count the items and say there is or there are. You can use this in different ways. You can use this as a card race. It's like student A shows one card after the other and student B always responds. This is individual approach. When your students are ready to challenge each other, you can absolutely do a reaction game and around the world game. This is where students are gonna challenge each other. Who says it the fastest, gets the card and gets a point. And we developed even a third P2 for there is, there are, there it is. Just a card flip. So card flip is uh, always pretty much the same. What you need here, you have cards of objects and cards of places. What's wrong? Is my connection slow? No, there we go. Cards, places. So you, on the sofa, there are four cats. Um, <clears throat> on the beach, there are seven computers. On the table, there, there's one mug, for example. The students are going to use these cards. You cut out the objects in one stack. You cut out the places in another stack. And with these cards, so you see the first one sofa, the second one box, and the third one kitchen. Okay. Coming back to the objects. So on the sofa, there's a cat. In the box, there's an apple. In the kitchen, there are clothes. Well, somebody needs to tidy up, right? If there are clothes in the kitchen, somebody needs to tidy up the kitchen. This is just a basic card flip for there is, there are. Clear? Do you have any questions or comments on these ones? You see there are three types of P2 activities for there is, there are. There's a card flip, short answer race, 
and flashcard reaction game. And all three activities, we made, them, we made one version for A1, and a bit higher, you see one version for A2 level students. Same thing, card flip for A2, short answer race for A2, and flash card reaction game for A2. So we've covered P1s. You have two to three different P1s, depending on the level for, uh, uh, there is, there are. Same thing, you have three different kind of P2s for there is, there are for both levels. And now after automating, we wanna get our students to speak or write actually. We wanna test their fluency. So here we have a P3 activity that's simply called describe the place. See this short activity is meant to give students the opportunity to practice there is, there are at a P3 level. So each group needs a set of cutout cards and one student takes a card and describes the place to his or her partner using there is, there are. The partners must guess the place on the card. You can make it into a race easily between groups, between uh, individuals. <clears throat> Let me show you the places they need to describe. There you go. So it's basically a guessing game, right? If I'm student A, I'll start describing, for example, a bathroom by saying there's, there's, there's sometimes a bathtub there, there's always a shower, <clears throat> uh, there's a sink, uh, there, there's definitely one mirror, there are probably more than one mirrors, uh, there are toothbrushes and toothpaste, there are different kinds of soaps and shampoos, things like that, and the person should understand the bathroom. Bedroom, dacha, zoo, cruise ship, etc. This is describe the place for A1. And we have the same thing for A2 level, just different places. And here the students at A2 level can, they should be, they should be a bit more fluent. So we've put more different things. So you see you have vampire castle, restaurant, the North Pole, a camping site, a farm, the jungle. Do you have any questions or comments on this? Everything is clear? So just to sum up again, there is, there are, the request for there is, there are last week, we have two different types of P1s, three different types of P2s, and one P3 for both levels. Okay. What just happened to my connection there? To the speed on Scramble from a while back. And the Dream Island project is a perfect production or project, uh, especially with kids, uh, tweens, things like that. They'll construct their Dream Island. They can make it into a poster. They can keep that poster in their portfolio. It's great for parents to witness, to see what's going on in the lesson. And it makes for a great presentation. It can be then in, in uh, uh, speaking format, it can be a presentation to the rest of the class. Um, it can be trying to convince other, people's, other people to come uh, um, to your dream island as a tourist destination. And it can also be a written project. So if there are no more questions or comments on there is there are, I'll move on to the next phase. Okay. Everything clear, yes? There is, there are yeah. no comments, no questions. 
All right. Now, there was also last week a request for be get used to. This is much higher level, of course. Mm -hmm. Be get used to. Uh, Tom and I are preparing a, a, a video. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be a video explanation of uh, how to teach be get used to because that can be that can be a, a, a challenge to students. It can be a, a, a tricky expression to get right. In my experience, the tricky part here with be get used to is not so much the concept. Makes sense to the students. They understand that when they when they use the expression be get used to, they're 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 saying how comfortable they are with a routine, with a habit. Mm -hmm. I found the key problem with students when they're learning be get used to is they struggle with they struggle with choosing be or get and in which tense they should put it in because there are some very standard expressions actually with be get used to for example I can't get used to it I've never gotten used to it these are pretty standard expressions that come up a lot I don't think you'll ever get used to that. <clears throat> I'm slowly getting used to. There are standard expressions like that that we use much more than other versions of be and get used to. And so what we're going to do here, this is a, a great way. You can use this activity both as a P1 and as a P2. If you're going to use it as a P1, you're basically going to, you're basically going to focus on um, the students doing these uh, using these cards individually and slowly. If you want to start using this as an automate activity, you cut, out, cut them out into cards and make students go through them just as we said earlier with there is there are. First time slowly, then time yourself, and then three challenges in class. Let me show you the cards. There we go. What I also really love about this activity is notice that we've, we've put examples of I used to as well for students to automate all of those different forms because they're very similar. So you've, you've just set up your own business. Well, <clears throat> uh, you've just set up your own business. Well, I, I, I used to work for someone. <clears throat> I didn't used to, if you've set up your own business, I didn't used to decide uh, what salary to give myself each month. And I'm getting used to, well, I'm getting used to worrying about the, the, the financial state of the business, but I'm also getting used to uh, um, dividing my time up myself. You've started a very strict diet, same thing. I used to, I'll never get used to, I can't get used to. You've bought a huge villa by the beach. I used to, I'll never get used to, I'm getting used to. Can you imagine people complaining about buying a huge villa on the beach? Oh, I'll never get used to all those tourists coming on our little private beach and we always have to tell them it's a private beach, it's not theirs. I'm slowly getting used to, uh, the awful cackling of the birds in the morning. I'm slowly getting used to the, 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 the smell of the sea in my kitchen. Poor darlings, right? They've just bought a huge villa by the beach and they need to get used to it. You've given up chocolate. I didn't used to, I can't get used to, I'm getting used to. So again, as I said, what I really love about this activity is that here we're giving students the expressions and they have to adapt the rest of the sentence, which means that the students are gonna focus on certain forms of be, get used to, and this is really gonna help their fluency because these are the most common forms. I'm getting used to, I can't get used to, I'll never get used to, <clears throat> I'm not used to, things like that. You see, your daughter's son has moved to a distant country. Well, 
I used to speak to uh, my daughter every single day. I'm not used to, <clears throat> I'm not used to, uh, um, I'm not used to my daughter calling me once a week. I'm, I'm getting used to following the news uh, of that country to know what's going on, where she's living. And we include it in here because these are great to use as P1s and as P2s. But students do need a lot of practice with that. So there's a second collection of life changes as well here for B get used to that work the same way. Okay. Your boyfriend, girlfriend has moved in with you. I used to, I didn't used to, I'm getting used to. You started working night shifts. I used to, I'll never get used to, I can't get used to. You've become vegan. I didn't used to, I can't get used to, I'm getting used to, et cetera, et cetera. You're on the Survivor reality TV show. A magic spell hit you and you're now seven years old again. I used to, I used to be able to vote, drink, drive. I didn't used to blah, blah, blah. I can't get used to blah, blah, blah. Your new album is number one in the charts. You've become a rock star. Well, I used to, <clears throat> I, 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 well, I, I, I used to, I used to get by every month with the, 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 the little pocket money I could muster from a few concerts here and there. Uh, I can't get used to the, 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 the huge amount of, uh, uh, friend requests I'm getting on social networks. Now that I've become a rock star, I don't know what to do. I'm slowly getting used to being more careful about what I post because now that I'm a rock star, everything that I post will get, uh, will get talked about and journalists might find, might, might come up with a weird story about me. So you have two collections of life changes cards to use in your classroom to both either establish understanding and basic logic of B get used to or automate B get used to. Any comments, requests, questions about the B get used to activities today? Mm -hmm. These life changes activities? No, all is clear. Everything clear? Yeah, yes. All is clear. I just realized, if I missed anybody's question, I just realized that the sound was off. I was only seeing the chat. Were there any questions? If you have any questions, could you please repeat them? I didn't hear them. No, no questions. No questions, clear. Okay. No, thank you. I'm sorry about that. I was reading the chat, but I was surprised that you couldn't hear anything and I just realized that the sound was off. All right, there is there are low level. B get used to P1, P2. Mm -hmm. Next on our list. Oh, I have so many things to show you. Okay, we're gonna dive into some vocabulary now. Okay. So you see just in skills, I'm just switching from grammar to vocabulary. And there we go. So this is a specific request as well of yours. Uh, this is a new exam we've got here. Well, new, <clears throat> relatively new, the Yege exam in uh, Russia at the end of school. And we've had a number of teachers asking us for ways to automate the vocabulary range the students are supposed to know. So what we simply did is we took the exam uh, vocabulary textbooks of Macmillan and per unit, we're collecting the vocabulary into groups. So last week I showed you traveling vocabulary. I showed you unit four sport activities. And in each case, remember we had P1, P2, we had sport activities cards. Then we had unscramble, 
Then we had make a story for P3 and for production, an original pr uh, speaking activity. We're gonna do the same thing this week with unit six. Unit six is a specific unit. The, the vocabulary range is very wide. So we summarized it into modern development. So the first thing I wanna show you is of course, match in memory. You have, you have loads of fill in the blank activities in those textbooks. We didn't feel like it was important to repeat those, but what we don't have are activities to automate the vocabulary. So here, what we did is we grouped all this vocabulary from unit six into modern development, artificial, false, natural, physical, true, accurate, method. The whole list is right here in every activity in the instructions, you have the whole list of the vocabulary. And what we did for you is we made match and memory cards first. So you'll have cards with the words and cards with pictures to match with the words and the students need to first match then the students flip the cards over so they're face down on the table and they play memory game the, the, the cards are all over the table and the students in turns take two cards they have to say the words okay even if it's a word not a picture they have to say both words if, it's, if they match, they keep both cards. It's one point for them. If they don't match, they put it in the same position that they were on the table. And next tune goes. So that's match and then memory. Then you can use these cards as well to automate by playing card flip, okay? So here the students only take the pictures and they're going to test themselves. Again, they show one card, uh, they show one picture, the other student should say the word, next picture, next picture, next picture. And same way of doing, uh, uh, as with there is, there are, you do it first slow, so that the students feel safe. The students need to feel safe. They need to feel confident to be able to build their reflexes. You do it slowly, then they time themselves, and then they challenge themselves. And you give them three attempts in the class. In one lesson, three attempts is fine. And then you'll do it again next lesson or you give it to them for homework. <clears throat> so if you're preparing students for Yege, modern development vocabulary, here you have the cards to play matching, memory, card flip, grab game. Another type of P1 for this is simply unscramble. So here you have just cards with all the vocabulary scrambled. Let's see if we can do it very quickly. So artificial, false, natural, physical, true, accurate. There you go. You can use these as cards so that students, again, if you're doing it slowly, it's a P1. If you're doing it with time and with challenges, it becomes a P2. So as for unit two and unit four, unit six has match and memory, unscramble, and then a speaking activity, we have make a story. So in this activity, it's like in the previous units, there are three stacks of cards, characters, places, and words. The students work in pairs or in mini groups. They each get two characters, a place, and we put 10 words, but you can change the number of words that they have to use in their story. So here you have the words that they're supposed to use in the story. You can change that to begin, to begin, uh, to, to begin slowly or, or easily Start with, for example, three words. Places, basement, wood cabin, bookstore, frog farm. There are some very ludicrous places. And there you have the characters for the different stories. So because of modern development vocabulary, you'll see that what we've put are, are 
characters that will likely discuss about development. So you see you have a superhero and uh, uh, here maybe he's a robber. You have someone who's poor, someone who's celebrating, someone at the beach. Uh, you have two animals, there's an ostrich and a giraffe. You have someone uh, uh, watching a 3D movie, someone who's outside in the cold, maybe in the, uh, at the North Pole, someone who's angry. All these characters, students take two characters, a place, and then three to 10 words that they need to use in their story. So let's say, for example, we have Mark the superhero and Bill. I think Bill's a thief. One place, basement. And three words. Let's start with three words to discover, research, experiment. Oh, they're too linked. We would shuffle these. In a, uh, so let's, let's do discover, development, factory. <clears throat> So a quick story could be something along the lines of, <clears throat> well, the bad guy, Bill, if I remember him correctly, the bad guy, Bill, um, was fired from uh, his factory work because he stole some things from, the, uh, 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 from, his, from his job. He was actually stealing them to, uh, 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 to help his development of a, a, a big weapon in his basement. He, he wanted to, um, as all big bad guys in superhero stories, he wanted to, uh, uh, to ransom some money from the world governments by threatening the world. But our superhero Mark, if I remember correctly, discovered his plans in his basement, came over, broke the big weapon, and took Bill to prison. Okay. Clear? Yeah. <laughs> so again, these are for our uh, vocabulary collections. We always have match and memory cards, unscramble activities to automate as well, Make a story is our P3 kind of activity where students are going to, there's, there's little preparation here. It's more about spontaneously coming up with the quick story that combines two characters, a place, and a certain number of words. And finally, a production activity or a project where students here have preparation time. They can put in the effort. They can show off the vocabulary that they want to show off, that they've learned. So this one for modern development, we thought a lot of the vocabulary is linked to, to some kind of development, some kind of uh, business maybe. Uh, so we call this crazy products. Students, students can work uh, individually or in pairs, mini groups. Students can use this acti well, you can use this activity as a, a, a speaking activity or more of a written activity where students at the end, they describe their creative products. They might write a letter to an investor to try to get, uh, to try to convince them to invest in their product. There are really a lot of different, it's very flexible. You remember that Tom and I already always love developing activities that are flexible so that teachers can adapt them to their more concrete needs. <clears throat> so here, the crazy products, we're going we're gonna to inspire the students because if we just ask them to come up with crazy products, there are always students that have, that have very rich and vivid imagination and they'll thrive, but there are other students that struggle with that. So we're going to give them pictures of their crazy products. Oh, not pictures, sorry, descriptions. And this, the, the, the students are going to, you see in the instructions, they're going to uh, think of what their product will look like, how it will be produced, the impact on the environment. You can include that or not, that depends on you. But there are a lot of exams that put a lot of stress on that nowadays. So it's very good for students to think here of the impact of their new crazy product on the environment, how it will be used, who will use it, and how it will be advertised. 
so I'd like to tell you all about my new product, Cat Hands. Cat Hands are amazing. <laughs> cat Hands. Cat Hands. Cat Hands. Well, aren't you, aren't you tired of, of people always uh, uh, um, guessing what you're about to do just because of the sounds you make? Have, have, you, have you ever noticed how cats are unpredictable because they have those little, little paws uh, uh, that, make, uh, that, that make it so that they can walk pretty much anywhere around silently? Well, with my cat hand uh, uh, gloves, you're going to be able to do exactly the same thing. You're going to be able to scratch yourself, to, to do various things with your hands silently. Okay. <laughs> Quick improvisation. I don't know why, but I saw cat hands. That was the first idea that came to my mind that they're silent. Okay. Genius glasses. Genius glasses are really great. Now, you would think that the glasses are going to make you smarter than you are and are going to turn you into a genius. No, 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 not at all. The genius glasses are very simply going to make you look like a genius to every single human being on the planet. No matter what culture they come from, the moment they see you in my genius glasses, they're going to think you're a genius. <laughs> so there are a lot of different uh, crazy products like that. We just give them a quick description of what the product is. Okay. Uh, they, the students, will think of all these things. And this is where they have great opportunity to practice this vocabulary. This is the vocabulary range. It's in the instructions of every activity that has this label at the beginning, Yiga Exam Vocabulary, Unit 6, Modern Development. Questions, comments, any requests in particular? Mm. That's great. That's OK. No questions? All right. Mm -hmm. No questions, that's very nice. All right. We're going to continue developing these in little units and little connection, collections of vocabulary as you requested specifically. This is, we're focusing on exam preparation basically here. We're taking the uh, exam collection of Yege because that's what we were asked. These exam, honestly, these exam preparation collections of vocabulary are very similar. You can use the same collections for different exams. Yeah. Overall, you're, you'll get 90, 95% of the vocabulary you need in there. Okay. So that's exam preparation vocabulary. We'll continue. So next week, I'll probably have uh, one or two new units to show you of that. Okay, that's, that will be nice. We'll continue, we'll continue. I'm looking forward. <laughs> to this. I have three more activities I really want to show you. Uh, it's going to take some time. We only have 15 minutes. Don't worry. The first thing I want to show you is it's right here. It's in a lot, a lot of different categories, as you can see. Fluency, vocabulary, grammar, business skills, functional language, soft skills. Why is it so? Because this activity, I, I developed this actually a while ago, and it's, it's, it's an awesome revision activity uh, or project because it gives you a lot, a lot of leeway to adapt it to different kinds of grammar you want to practice, different sets of vocabulary. The whole idea here is that students are going to design their very own soap opera. It's loads mm. of fun. Yeah. The whole idea, so you see for a soap opera, I really love this activity because actually you can start this at very low level. Yeah. Quite typically, low level uh, textbooks will start the academic year with uh, vocabulary on uh, relationships, family, uh, routines, habits, jobs, things like that. And that is pretty much all you need to set up the premises of your own 
soap opera. So the materials you need to set this up are actually pretty limited. All you need are a set of characters. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's go to the characters immediately. Mm -hmm. So you can cut these up into cards and you can use a certain number of these. It's as you wish. You don't have to use all nine. You can. How I use this, I will first start by handing out. My students are in mini groups or in pairs, and I give, you, I give them the different characters in cards so that they can play with them and put them in different areas uh, of their table so that they're not limited. Because you see, if you give them the sheet like this, they will naturally make relationships between neighboring cards. Yeah. So the, 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 the old lady here, top left, is very unlikely to have a relationship with uh, the guy here, <laughs> bottom right. Cut them out in little cards and give them to your students in cards. And the first thing they're going to do is relationships, family. So, okay, <clears throat> let's say what? Well, this is Jack and uh, this is, uh, I don't know, Rose, his wife. They have a young kid, Bill. And that's the grandma. Now it's the grandma. She's the mother of Jack. So, okay, let's say that she's Jack's mother and she's Jill's, no, Rose's mother-in-law. And they continue like that. And they start building relationships between the characters. Next, you start asking about their occupations and their habits. And so the students start really painting a picture of a soap opera. What I like about the soap opera idea is that you can, you can use this activity just uh, without the soap opera setting. The students are gonna have less fun with it, honestly. The students are gonna be, they're gonna be more set in their standard expe expectations of what they see. When you tell them that this is a soap, opera, a soap opera, the students have loads of fun. First of all, they don't associate themselves to the story, or, well, to the uh, uh, relationships, so they don't feel that you're, uh, there can be a judgment on what relationships they choose. Quite the opposite. It's a soap opera, so it should be as crazy as can be. And they come up with crazy ideas of relationships, which means that they practice more complex vocabulary. For example, mother-in-law, things like that. Distant relative. Same thing with jobs, same thing with occupations and habits. They're gonna give all these characters some very funny habits, some weird jobs. And this is going to leave the door open to a lot of fun in the soap opera. Okay. So you see, you can just start with basically vocabulary. Relationships, family, routines and habits, <clears throat> jobs. Then, when you start asking the students to describe routines and habits, you're getting into present simple. Mm -hmm. And you can even get into present continuous by planning out the first season of the soap opera. It's here, third step of the activity. Look, students of their soap opera, soap opera. They should first come up with a present continuous sentence for each character that describes the change they're going through in this season. Or more complex forms of changes, such as to be used to, to get used to, or just used to for higher levels. So here, coming back to the characters, for each card, students are going to come up with a present continuous to describe what change that character is going through in this season. All characters are very, a good soap opera, you need some change for everyone. So for example, she's, she's having her house redecorated. He's, uh, he's looking for a new job. She's, uh, what is Rose going through? What change is Rose going through? Um. She's going to do more shopping next <laughs> okay. season. Okay. Even though her husband is looking for a new job, she's going <laughs> to do more shopping? She's expecting him to, to get a very prosperous and well-paid job, I suppose. Okay. She hopes for this. 
So when students do that, basically, just you start them without asking them to come up with a complex uh, uh, storyline. First, they come up with a present continuous for each character. And then you tell them, okay, now try to put them together. Okay, we need, we need now to put these together to have an interesting first season. At the end, <clears throat> students follow up by thinking of how each change affects the other characters. So as you said, for example, you said, I said Jack is looking for a new job. And then you said Rose is uh, uh, shopping more this year. She's spending more. So here, we already have a first potential conflict in our first season between the <laughs> husband and the wife. The students brainstorm their ideas in their groups. And this should basically feed their season one plot description. Okay. They can, they can even come up with a few cliffhangers for the last episode. So once they've thought about how each problem is going to affect each other, they can think of how they will resolve those and they should keep two or three maybe unresolved that, they, that can be cliffhangers at the end of the season or they can resolve all the issues, but those issues give birth to two or three cliffhangers at the end of the season. And there are different ways students can use this project actually. They can make it into a poster again uh, to present to different people. They can give a presentation to the class. It can be a written activity. You can ask them after all the brainstorming, you can ask the students individually to write the plot of their first season. I also like to get them to try to sell their idea to reach the budget they need. For example, this, they, they, in this format, students have to pay attention to their functional language as well, formality, familiarity, because they're trying to convince someone to invest money in their soap opera. You can also, uh, I love the flexibility of this project, honestly. You can also get them to write reviews of each other uh, as homework. You can ask them to speculate on what the second season will be made of. It's really a very flexible activity. So I highly recommend this, your very own soap opera. And you see, it sounds complicated, but actually the target language students need to do this. I, I've done this with A2 level students. They loved it and they practice their vocabulary and their present tenses really, really well. There you have it again. Any questions, comments on your very own soap opera? Mm, well, no, no. It's quite clear. All right. It's explained very well. Okay, perfect. I, I really love this one. I really wanted to show you this one. And now we're going to switch. Last two topics I wanted to show you. We're going to switch away from <clears throat> grammar and vocabulary and we're going to go to soft skills. soft skills. The first thing I wanted to show you was, so we're working on this. This was a request from last week. You told me that, um, and I agree, a lot of our students struggle with debating skills, discussion skills, argumenting, and we're preparing with Tom, we're preparing uh, uh, strategies and P1 exercises for the pyramid of I'm right. So how to do effective argumentation, how to get your point across. And this is very useful for students. Speaking skills uh, for the real world, Convincing is a very, very big part of the professional world nowadays and the educational world if they're at university, things like that. Also in written format because they, they need to write essays, emails, things like that. And for exam preparation. So you'll find, uh, uh, you'll find this is very useful as well for exam preparation. 
before we put out the, the, the strategies and things like that, we wanted to put out some debate ideas because very often debate ideas that we give our students are um, <clears throat> too close to home, if, uh, if you see what I mean. It's very important for students when they're practicing their debate skills to take a step back from the debate. I always make my students, uh, um, if they've debated one side, I make them then debate the other side. They need to be able to jump from one side to the other. It's a great way for them to develop their critical thinking, for them to be able to notice when people are trying to convince them that they need to think outside the box, to look at everything. <clears throat> And it's a very good exercise for them to focus on their debate skills, not on finding arguments. So very often when I give uh, debates to my students and it's things like, well, um, driving a car or taking public transport, for example, they always already have an opinion on that. And they focus on trying to convince you of their opinion because their opinion matters very, very <laughs> much. <laughs> and they, they, they're looking for the arguments and they're not so much focusing on how to present their arguments and how to convince you. So first thing, I like using abstract debates, for instance. Abstract debates are debates where you can't have, you can't, your opinion absolutely doesn't matter because you know what, there is no opinion. I really like these debates because students are going to be put in situations where you're gonna make them brainstorm ideas, outline their argumentation, and then debate on something that is completely ludicrous. Let me show you some examples of these abstract debates. Blue or red? Seven or 11? <laughs> Jupiter or Saturn? Left or right? All these things Buttons or zippers. I like just with names. John or James? The moon or the sun? There's no clear direction in these debates. Students can really brainstorm loads of ideas on why John is better than James. Mm -hmm. On why up is better than down. It, <laughs> the opinion of the students don't matter. In these debates, uh, the opinion does not matter. It's all about the art of argumentation. Anybody can argue that left is better than right or the opposite in a successful way. So I really like these abstract debates where you're going to put your students in debate areas that just the only thing to focus on is on your talents of argumentation, on your skills, uh, how are you going to convince the other person that, yes, left is better than right? If you ever hesitate when you're walking around and you're lost, always take a left. So there are loads of instructions here on how to use these cards for speaking debates, for essays, individually, in pairs, in groups. It's loads of fun. I always have loads of success with these abstract debates. Students really like this thinking outside the box approach. And similarly, something else to, uh, uh, for our students to focus not on the question, not on the ideas, but on argumentation. Alternate universe debates. I really like those kind of debates where you take something that is seemingly second nature to us. It's, it's, it's something that is so obvious in our everyday life that we don't question it anymore. And you present an alternate universe uh, uh, option for it. And students have to debate that. Let me give you some examples again. Wi-Fi is a bit slow. to open, come on. There we go. So the top left one is one of my classic examples. I love using it as an example. So 
you know that all toilet paper rolls come in round shaped rolls. Well, mm -hmm. you're going to have part of the class debate the value of having square shaped toilet paper rolls. And students are going to come up with interesting ideas. Um, again, the argumentation, the argumentation is key here because really their role. So it's, it's to us, it's obvious that they should be round, but actually they waste space. They, uh, um, when they fall on the floor, they roll away from you. I mean, it's, it's horrible. If they were square, they would fall on the floor and they would stay there. They wouldn't roll away from you. And maybe cats wouldn't play with them so much. I like the other one, traffic lights versus traffic sirens. It's, to us, it's all, it's all obvious that we have red, yellow, and green traffic lights everywhere on all roads. But what if we changed that? What if we had traffic sirens? There would be a specific sound for when you can drive or when you can walk and another specific sound for when you, can, when you can't drive or walk. And students have lots of fun with these. Aging versus younging, okay? Instead of growing older, we would grow younger and younger. Skyscrapers versus land deepers. Instead of building those tall towers that reach the sky and scrape the sky, we would build these long shafts going deep, deep down in the ground. So these are two first debate activities that we wanted to show you. We edited them. Uh, these are things that we've been using a lot and we'll con continue to add these. So these are debate skills, alternate universe debates, and abstract debates. Any comments, questions on those? Well, uh, do you give children, do you give your students some special uh, questions, uh, do you prompt them how to ask questions, uh, some phrases maybe, some to... Um, for the to debates? Be, yeah, for the debates, yes. Maybe some keywords, some key expressions to discuss something. Or they so, just do it from themselves. It's up to them to... So, yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't start using these with kids yet, although Although kids are very curious minds, we, we, you could be very much surprised by arguments that kids would come up <laughs> with. But mm, usually kids at that level are not really learning. Unfortunately, they're not learning soft skills, debate skills yet. Uh, but yes, I would start with tweens, teens, adults. Mm -hmm. um, this is, as we described here, you see it's a P3 or it's a production activity. So you need, in your P1, you need to give them materials. And we're preparing those. Uh, so mm -hmm. they might be ready by next week, maybe in two weeks. There are a lot of these in textbooks. We mm -hmm. see these two activities as ways for you to practice the functional language debate skills that uh, come up in textbooks when you're preparing students for exams. This is a great way to practice that. Uh, it's for exam preparation, it's for, for business skills, different things like that. But stu you, students need some kind of guidance. Yeah, yeah guidance. Maybe what you can do as well is instead of guiding the students yourself, is showing your students some debates and getting the students to identify some key yeah, uh, yeah. functional language, some things like that. I mean, um, you can actually get videos of British parliamentary debates even. Mm -hmm. But that's quite high level. Yeah, I the British Parliament, you. there are uh, videos of them debating and everything. Um, that would be high level. Okay, thank you. The last thing I wanted to show you today was uh, uh, another soft skills that is very useful for students. It's implying in English. So we've added more activities for this. Here you have implying in English, the strategies. 
So this is a proper soft skills lesson. Sorry, this is just exercises. This is employing in English. There you go. So this is, again, there's a nice little text. This is for high level students. There's a nice little text on why we want to imply, why we might want to hint at things. Because in social situations, in professional situations, sometimes you're never really quite sure of what might offend another person. So instead of stating directly your opinion or what you want to do, you might want to test the waters. And in that case, there are different ways you can imply in English. You can use conditionals, perfect tenses, things like that. It's a very, very good lesson on soft skills, how to use perfect tenses, conditionals, uh, how to use uh, uh, expressions with but to imply. And there's a very good brainstorm activity here for more exercises. There were loads of exercises in the previous uh, handout I showed you. But this I find is a very good way to introduce the skill to students if they're unsure of what you mean by implying. Look at these different situations. You want to say the same thing, but to different people. So situation one, someone asks you what you think of the soup and you <laughs> genuinely hate it. It was disgusting. <laughs> but there are three different scenarios and I think you'll agree that you'll say it in a different, very different way in these three scenarios. So scenario A, you're at a restaurant and you're actually in, in a bad mood already. It's been a difficult day. And the waiter waitress asks you, what do you think of the soup? Well, look, honestly, uh, I was expecting something much better. The, the, the soup was cold. Uh, I, plus, I don't think your chef got the recipe right. I don't believe you should put pineapple in bush. Okay? I don't know, something like that. <laughs> it's a, here it's a client-customer relationship. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Waiter-waitress-customer relationship. So you're freer to be a bit more direct. At the same time, most people will not be completely fully direct. I hate it because, well, you know what? It's not the waiter waitress's fault. They didn't cook the soup. But then you have more and more tactful ways of saying it because, well, then scenario B, you're talking to your best friend and your best friend spent a few hours preparing that bush for mm -hmm. you. And no matter how, well, you know, that's, yeah, I like it. It's, 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 it's quite original. I, I'd never had a borscht like that. Um, did, you, did you find that recipe online? Because the, 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 the pineapple in borscht is something really original. I've never tried that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here you're being a bit, it's still a best friend, so you might not need to hide or hint that badly. But still, you're being more cautious of the feelings of the other person. And scenario C, you tell your students, you're Buckingham Palace, okay? You've, you've been invited to Buckingham Palace to celebrate your professional or, or uh, academical achievements. And the Queen of England is actually hosting you at, the, the, at Buckingham Palace. You just got served soup. Now, you know the Queen herself didn't cook the soup. But still, it's the queen's soup. It's her chef. And she asks you, what do you think of the soup? Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Interesting. Yummy. <laughs> it's so tasty. I'd never had, I'd never had borscht made by a, an English chef before. It's, it's, <laughs> it's different. It's, it's, it's very original. I'll definitely, I'll definitely ask him for the recipe. I don't know. So different scenarios, different intonations, all this, if you're interested in all these soft skill lessons um, on our website, these ones are called implying in English. Okay. And you'll also have a speaking activity here where on each card, the student has something a bit delicate to say to the partner. Mm -hmm. And the, so student A 
says what they have to say and student B is going to be able to react to that in either oblivious way, no idea, didn't get the message, offended way, what, what, uh, or accepting way. I understand, you're probably right. And this is great for students to play with different social situations. Tell your partner that his or her breath is bad. Tell your partner that you can't write him or her a job recommendation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Hairstyle doesn't look good. You're tired of hearing their personal opinion all the time. So these are all under soft skills, we call it implying in English. Do you have any questions, comments, any new requests for us, for activities you'd like us to develop? No, that's okay, as for me. And these yoga activities are very, very nice and very, for yoga, very useful. We've, we've, yeah, very useful. I, I think that for many of us, they are very useful. I find it useful, but everything is perfect, I think. <laughs> now look, you'll find uh, um, we're going to work on perfecting uh, 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 the, the, the search engine as well, but just for you to see, for example, Yege stuff, you can find it under exam preparation here, okay? Mm -hmm. Here we have, mm -hmm. in skill, you have different categories of skills that you might want to practice in your lessons, mm -hmm. and you see that the skills, sometimes there's more than one. There can be an activity that has both vocabulary and grammar, for instance, okay? If I, if, okay. I, if I type a search with both, I will find activities that have both. Mm -hmm. So you can have more than one skill at a time. Mm -hmm. And one of them is exam preparation. You'll find a lot of activities there. You will also find level of difficulty. Mm -hmm. We've wow. started putting different uh, exams as well in level of difficulty because Exams have specific levels of difficulty, honestly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You might have a student that is at A2 level, but they're, they need to pass the Yege at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And you need activities for Yege level, not for yes. A2 level. So in level of difficulty, you can find Yege as well. You can just okay. search by Yege in level of difficulty and you'll find all these activities as well. Mm. Yes, that's very convenient. All right, so thank you very much. For now, we're going to continue on uh, previous requests and requests I got uh, uh, by email. I got more requests for low level activities, uh, especially for P2, automate style activities, those flashcards, memory, match and memory uh, uh, collections that we put together. That's what I've got on the plan. More uh, vocabulary ranges. We're going to continue doing that. I didn't show you a new verb pattern collection this week because we don't have a new one, but we're still working on those as well. Be get used to. You'll get a, a, a video explanation of how uh, how best to teach it and at different levels. And debating the pyramid of I'm right. Pyramid of what will you repeat? Sorry? Uh, pyramid of what debating the pyramid of what I didn't. Oh, we, we just call it the pyramid of I'm right. It's, I'm it's right. a very easy structure. To, to, to help students uh, oh. develop their discussion skills and their debate skills. So okay. we're going to use, we're going to add that for what we talked about today, argumentation. Mm -hmm. These abstract debates, uh, alternate universe debates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. You see, here we have alternate universe debates, abstract debates that we talked about. 
they're mm -hmm. great to practice, but there's also something that the students need to practice, uh, well, to, to get and then practice. It's how to construct a good argumentation. Yeah. So you, you have problematic and solution, and everything should point back to that. Your problematic and the solution that you're putting forward has two to three arguments. And each of those two to three arguments has two supporting arguments, for instance. And everything always points back up to the problematic and the solution. So we're preparing that. That will be a great P1 for students. Yes. Are there any new requests for us? For me, no. Nothing in particular? Nothing, yes, nothing, not now. Well, as always, you can definitely email. Okay. And remember, you don't, you can email me directly if you have any particular requests. Uh, remember that you can also easily message me in the uh uh on our website okay, okay thank you if you go here you click on your name and you click on messages and just compose the first person you'll find is me antoine mark okay all right mm -hmm. All right, if there are no more questions or comments, we'll close the, this week's webinar now. I'll send you an uh, email invitation at the beginning of next week for next week's webinar. Okay, right. thank you very much. Thanks You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. Catch you, catch you all next week yeah. for more activities. I'm looking forward. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.